You see how that one's minding his own business, not really paying attention to much? But this one, she always watches where Bella is. So she tries to claim Thor from Bella and control Bella. And <clears throat> they had a little, you know, where she corrected Bella like the first couple of days. And then Bella got a little nervous and she got all insecure about it. And um, <clears throat> it only lasted a couple days because, you know, keeping this little one under control. But you see how she's always concerned with where she is. And if I, if I call her over here, Bella, come here, pop up. It's like she's okay, you know what I mean? As long as things don't get too amped up. But this is pretty common where you see this. She's always concerned and then she tries to keep her away from Thor. If Thor tries to play with her, she tries to play with Thor or whatever. <clears throat> and she just got, you know, kind of corrected for it a little while ago. So she's not bad now. But you see how he doesn't really care what's going on. He's pretty just chill and confident over there, not worried about anything. And she's like concerned about where is that dog all the time. So what happens a lot is you get um, oh, she's behind there. You get a, a a dog or a couple dogs together, and they get along, and they're at the park or they're in the yard and they're playing, and everything seems fine. And then you get home, and then you get this like interloper syndrome where the dog feels like you know the other dog is invading their space. You know, and maybe they're a little territorial over there. And things quiet down and get still. The dog lays down and watches every move that the other dog is doing. That is a disaster waiting to happen. These two dogs paired together, like going home with somebody who doesn't know how to deal with it, would be an absolute disaster. <clears throat> because what happens is because she had insecurities about this before, the, that one over there, is that she'll be staring at her, right? And then the other dog will lift its head up a little bit and just kind of just kind of look and then look away really quick, like a shy look. And that'll cause this dog to just spring up after her. So you see now, everywhere she goes, she's over there now somewhere. Everywhere she goes, she pays attention to where that dog is. And that is a disaster waiting to happen. I'll try to get some more when they get a little bit more active. He's pooped out because he's been like playing with everybody today, but when they get a little bit more active, she tries to keep this one away from him, and she tries to control her quite a bit. But you see it. You see how she's always paying attention to where is that dog? What's that dog doing? So now the dog is right behind Thor, so she has to lift her head up to see. See it? The ears forward, she's got a lot of concern with what's going on with that dog. <clears throat> Let's get him moving. Come on, puppers. See how right away, we're, we're moving towards and right away she tries to push her away. She tries to control her movement, her access to Thor, her access to other things. I'm really surprised right now. She must be curious about some smell here. But she's not going in between the two dogs. She'll even do it to me, actually. She'll pick a person and uh, pick a dog and decide that she's got to... Uh, guard that person. She had issues at the shelter from where she was at because she was doing that, not necessarily to other dogs, but to people. And I haven't really seen that so much here. But a lot of it unleashed before if somebody was walking her and then somebody approached, she would uh, react and whatnot. But you see what I mean? It's like, it's okay out here. You know what I mean? She's not really very interactive with the other dog. But it seems like, oh, they get along, you know? They'll even run around and play together. If stuff gets a little rough, she gets a little bit, like, unsure about what's going on, and she tends to get, um, 
like her hackles will go up and she gets nervous about it and tries to be controlling about it so she's got to be toned down a bit sometimes but you can see she's still Bella, stop eating grass. Bella. Come on, Bops. Come on, Bella. See it? It's very subtle, so if you don't notice this, and trust me, when things quiet down, like at night or whatever, and everything settles down, that's when the real staring begins, and then that eye contact is what's going to cause a confrontation. No. i got crackers for me in there. They're not for you. But the male, actually having the male around, does help kind of keep things under control as well. Because if he sees that they're, they're getting into it, he'll just like go get in between them. See what I mean? It's like, it's not bad, it's okay. You're, you're not really seeing like a lot of skill behavior or anything like that. A little bit, but nothing too concerning. But I, I've seen that before and people don't really understand why because they think, well, the dogs, you know, they met several times and they seem like they get along and everything and then boom. Knockdown brawl happens. 